Koshal Patel, luxury realtor in America's finest city. Your dream home in paradise is waiting. Buying your piece of paradise with Koshal. Presented on IQ Podcast at Attorney King Studios. Sponsored by Oscar Gastelum, president of Mortgage Hub Incorporated. MortgageHub.loans. Now, Koshal Patel. Hope you're having a fantastic week, fantastic day. I'm Koshal Patel with Windermere Homes and Estates in San Diego. The skyline in America's finest city continues to change, and there are several developers who've helped make that possible. Jason Wood is a partner at Sistera, which has helped develop dozens of projects in San Diego, including the Sempra Energy Headquarters in downtown and, of course, the Diamond View Tower in East Village. And you have your hands full working on 7th and Market, which is bringing the first five-star hotel to downtown. Can't wait to have a spa day at the Ritz. I know it's a few years away, but tell us about this exciting project for our city, Jason. Well, it's a long time coming. Um, the city owns the, the the property, and they put out an RFP uh, several years ago, and uh, we competed against several very good developers, and a lot of good ideas came out of that. But um, you know, fortunately for us, we were um, awarded the project from the from the the city, and the opportunity to go and and get the project fully lined up. Um, we had a part of our original program. We had uh, uh, a gourmet grocer, uh, uh, one that's well known, um, had a signed lease with them, and uh, we had a deal with Marriott for uh, a Ritz Carlton hotel. So you know, people were very excited about uh, about everything. Uh, we went through the entitlement process and got the the project fully entitled, but then um, there was a sequel lawsuit. Uh, that was filed against the city and the project that held us up a few years, uh, but we were we were um, uh, successful in uh, first winning at trial, and then um, r- shortly after the the uh, the decision was appealed, uh, we reached a settlement agreement um, with the people who filed the lawsuit, so we were able to move things forward, and um, we. Uh, uh, then we're out again trying to line up our capital stack. You know, you know fortunately, Marriott with the Ritz Carlton brand has uh, held strong with us, and uh, they're dedicated to the project. We're in weekly calls, emails on different uh, design. They're so committed to the project. It was initially going to be 153 rooms, and we, uh, you know, they asked for more square footage in the project, and it you was know, given. Uh, the entitlements we um, and the overall design, we had a challenge on increasing the square footage of the hotel component too much. But what we were able to do is is look at the rooms and the way the rooms were designed uh, originally, and we got a little bit more uh, uh, efficient with our room laid out. And right now, uh, as of a few weeks ago, we made an a, a uh, an agreement with Marriott to increase the. Uh, the Ritz Carlton size from 153 rooms to 171 rooms. So, you know, they're committed to the market and committed to the project, and we're moving things forward. Uh, we have most recently just secured a very key part of our capital stack, and just a few hours ago, I was uh, I was talking to one of our uh, lead possible lenders for the project. So, um, very excited to move things forward. Um, it's been a long time coming. Uh, we about eight or nine months ago, we thought we were we were a go and we had a little hiccup uh, and then we got hit by covid, you know, 19 and uh, that slowed things to da- slowed things down. But we're back at it again. And um, it looks like we're going to be moving things forward to be able to start construction mid next year. Oh, that's music to many people's ears. So start construction next year, Jason, and then when is it, the project expected to be completed? Yeah, you would say most downtown high rises take about two years to, to to build. But this project, because it's at the maximum height for downtown buildings of 500 feet, and in order to service all the different uses within the building, uh, we need to go down five levels of parking. Um, so we got to dig down to the bottom of the hole. It's going to take several months. And then by the time it'll take a year before we're down to the bottom of the hole and up before you actually see a building going vertical. Um, so it's going to take three years in total before, you know, people will be staying at the Ritz and, 
you know, buying rich residences. And uh, so I can have my spa day in 2024. Is that what you're saying? Basically? Basically summer of 24. <laughs> that's, what we're, that's what we're looking at. <gasps> All right. So, and you said uh, this is music to many who live downtown because we need more grocery stores and who, which grocery store has agreed to be in the storefront? Yes, we have, um, uh, we have a, a letter of intent with uh, Gelson's Market. Um, so uh, we're hopeful we get that to a full lease and, um, and they're, you know, have them in the project. They'd be a great, a grocer that, you know, they have three locations right now in San Diego, uh, one in Bird Rock, one in, uh, um, La Costa and another one up in Del Mar. And it's a great, you know, Southern California base. They're best at based out of LA. They have about 26 locations, I believe. And they're just a great market. So looking forward to them. Yeah, we all are. We're just going to have to wait a little bit. Um, how many stories is the Ritz going to be? Well, um, there's a difference in floor to floor heights from uh, residential with office and other uses. So our first, because of the Marriott and the, bo the, the boardroom and the meeting rooms that are on the first and second floor, our first and second floors are, are um, you know, a larger floor to floor than most residential buildings. So when you look at some of the other residential buildings in downtown that are close to the maximum height, and they go up to 41, 42 stories. Uh, our top floor will actually be the 39th floor, but it is at a height that is comparable to, to say the 40th or 41st floor of, of some other towers. But right there on 7th and Market, you will be taller than the Mark, uh, which will be on the left side of the Ritz-Carlton. You'll be taller than Ulta, which is on the right, and then even Park Loft, which is in front of it, essentially. Correct. So 39 stories. And when we're talking about some of the highlights uh, of uh, this project, uh, give us some of the highlights. You know, is there going to be a rooftop restaurant? How many pools are we looking at? So what are some of the highlights that, and amenities that people are going to get to enjoy? Well, what was very important in the design, and I commend my, my I, the team over at, at Carrier Johnson who came up with some of the ideas. We, we kind of knew the program that we wanted to put into it and had some thoughts on how that might work. But uh, Dave Gonzalez um, over at Carrier Johnson did a great job of talking many years ago when we were first were getting going. He said, this is what we had envisioned, all these uses. How can we make it work? And he came up with some great ideas. I mean, I was envisioning, quite honestly, that it was going to be one tower. Um, and it ultimately ended up being two towers, one that went up all the way to 500 feet and a second tower that only went up 16 stories. And that one is the office tower that is about the same height as the Semper building. And then, as I said, the residential tower goes all the way up to the maximum height of 500 feet. In the middle, we've actually connected to two towers with the hotel. So the, ninth, the 20th floor of the high rise tower connects over to the roof of the 16 story uh, office tower. And there is a, so almost it creates a fly through from the seventh floor through the, through the uh, 19th floor um, where there's this open space, open gap in between the two buildings and underneath where the hotel is. So this hotel will bridge over that. Well, part of the, the, the magic of that design was it enabled us to activate more roof decks because when, if it was just one tower, we would have been able to activate the podium level above the parking and the podium level, like most of the, the tower projects in, in San Diego. And then you have an opportunity maybe to do something at the top of the building on the, the real top, but because you have rooftop equipment and that's 500 feet up in the air, um, there's less opportunities to make a real livable space, but by, but by connecting the two buildings, we've now able to uh, not only have the roof deck at the podium, which is where the main hotel pool will be, and also a pool for the apartment built apartment units in the project. There's 159 apartment units in the project, but then on top of the office building, rather than just being mechanical equipment and vacant, you know, rooftop, 
because the hotel bridges over to and connects to it, we're now going to have a water feature and an indoor outdoor restaurant bar, you know, uh, uh, active uh, space there on top. And then on top of the hotel, the portion that 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 bridges over to the top of the office building, there'll be another roof deck there, and that'll have another pool on it that will be um, specific and exclusive for the Ritz residence owners. Are we are, looking at three pools then? We're looking at three full pools and to be determined on the 20th floor mm-hmm. on top of the office building. We I said water feature, mm-hmm. but it could be a pool. We're, we're still working with Marion on how we want that programmed. And what's the price per square footage for the residential condos? You know, you know the business. It depends on the view. It mm-hmm. depends on the location. So, you know, the 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 non ballpark, non water view on the let's say twenty ninth floor, which is our first floor of of first full floor of of units, um, will be different than the ballpark water view side of the thirty ninth floor. So I would say you know we're looking right now. Um, you know, in the range of 2000 to 2500 a foot. And when you look at that price figure right now, 2000 2500 in downtown would be the most expensive uh, for any condo. And I would say even that pass surpasses some places even in La Jolla. Um, do you worry about that steep cost and how that will be received? I would say... Do I worry about it? I worry about a lot of things on the project. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, you, you don't get it right by thinking you have it figured out from the, you know, all along. You get it right by being worried about things and then making sure you have it right. Um, so, yes, it, it, in that sense, I do worry about it. But I, but, you know, several years ago when Bosa started development of Pacific Gate and the rumor was out that he was, shooting for 1500 a foot right everyone said the same thing oh the downtown market doesn't isn't really proven much above a thousand there's a handful of units that have been sold above a thousand a foot and they only have a couple of penthouses available there their vacancies you know they i I mean it's sold out i thought it sold out yeah Mm -hmm. and they're and i think they were on average right around 1500 you know on average and that's units at the second, third, and fourth floor. That's the, the one of the things that people need to think about when we when you look at our average and people say, oh, well, boy, that's a big lofty average to try to hit in that 20, you know, between 2,000 and 2,500. But we don't have units starting until we're at the 28th floor, which is, as I said before, because of the floor to floor of our first couple floors is really equivalent to the 30th floor. And so, there will be nothing in front of them, no ex- Manchester project. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, it's, a uh, you know, your views are pretty phenomenal, pretty, pretty much with what you see is what you're going to get. Um, you know, and I can't so say nothing there, can be built in front of the Ritz Carlton. You have the Semper building in front and then the ballpark essentially, is there anything historic that's, um, anything else that would impede any of those views? Well, I mean, there's, there's a couple sites here and there, mm-hmm. but um, that could, that could block a little bit of a view here, a little bit of a view there. Uh, there is a, a parking lot that is nearby that, that a tower there could block some of the view, but it's not a situation like some towers where directly across the street is a vacant piece of property that a tower could come up and block pretty much your entire view. So we feel pretty good about the, the fact that, that, that the view you're going to get is going to be pretty close to the view you're going to have for a long time. Right. And Jason, you mentioned that there was going to be some apartments. Um, So you're talking about a five-star hotel, which, you know, just looking at the price per square footage and, you know, it is again, one of the most luxurious places uh, staying at the Ritz. Um, How do you think the, the apartments in there, um, how do you think that mix is all going to flow? Well, um, one of the largest challenges of the project from the from from the start, and when we had our original team all on board, um, the original grocer Marriott with with Ritz Carlton, and 
you know, internally was figuring out how you get multiple lobbies because we have to have a lobby for the office, a lobby for the hotel, a lobby for the apartments, a lobby for the Ritz residences, a lobby for the grocer, and a lobby for the access to the above grade public parking, mm. which is a use that I don't really talk a lot about because it's not really sexy like the other, all the other rest of the uses. So Glad was, you had to figure out that there puzzle. Was <laughs> six different you know, access points and, and lobbies and elevator you know, accesses that had to get to get figured out and have that work. And then with our new partner that we're signing up, you know, any day now, um, which I'll tell you a little bit about. Um, we had them join the the mix here recently. And over the last month, a month and a half, we've been engaged back with, with Ritz and them to kind of retalk about some of that. And some things were starting to move around and some adjustments being made. Um, we wanted to put a ground floor food and beverage um, um, uh, location, which we didn't have in the original program. Um, and we added that and figured that out. But it's, it's, it's definitely, but back to your question, um, I kind of get off on a tangent there a little <laughs> bit, but I do remember the original question is you're asking about the, uh, the, the apartments and having them work in. They, all the uses do have separate elevator banks separate entries so the apartment uh, departments will be part of the project and in the same building as the ritz carlton and the lobby will be next door to the entry to the ritz ground floor food and beverage outlet as well as next door on the other side to the um, ritz residence uh lobby it'll have its own separate lobby its own separate elevator bank um, and its own separate amenities the sixth floor deck above the podium will have half of it will be devoted to the ritz carlton hotel and half of it will be devoted to the apartments uh, amenities and was this something the city required for you to put the apartments uh, some essential affordable housing in there y yes the, the the site was at is actually owned by a housing trust fund so the original deal was in the original RFP, they had a mandate that there be, you know, come to us with what you think should be on this property. And there were certain items that had to be in the project. It had to have a certain amount of commercial space, but they also said it had to have at least 200 residential units. And at least 15% of those had to be affordable. And you weren't allowed to pay the in lieu fee or offer those in an offsite you know, arrangement, which you can do in other projects. Um, so, so we have 218 total residential units and we have 34 of the 159 apartments are affordable. So that's how we got the work around. And how did this idea evolve of bringing a Ritz to San Diego, which many are surprised that we have no five-star luxury hotel downtown with all the conventions and all the people, international, you know, tourists that we get, no Ritz Carlton in San Diego. Yeah, it's it's you know, from talking to and I don't want to speak for Marriott who owns, I should have said that earlier on, who owns the Ritz Carlton brand. So, you know, sometimes I'm talking to people who carry a Ritz Carlton business card and sometimes it's Marriott International uh business card. Um and um but when we're talking with them um early on, it was that they were looking. They were interested in in the market and uh, they just didn't find the right opportunity, the right opportunity that it was either projects that wanted to do more hotel rooms than they could, than they could fit. So, or that they thought could be justified in the market or it just wasn't the right location or the right dynamic or something just wasn't right. And when, when we presented them this opportunity, they, jumped on it and said, now this sounds like the right number of units and the right mix. And actually it's an interesting story how it came about. Um, as you know, um, you mentioned the Semper Energy Building, which is a def directly across the street. Uh, we had some very prelim discussions prior to signing um, Sempra to do a build a suit there of their new corporate headquarters building to do a JW Marriott. They're on the site of about 450 to 500 rooms. And 
of course, when Semper came along and we started talking to Sempra, the JW Marriott ideas you know, went out the window and we focused on, on doing the Semper deal. And, you know, we, we got it done. And then when the city came out for the RFP, that's why the first phone call we made was to Marriott. And the first conversation we had with the rep there that handled development of this region for Marriott was, okay, we have a 200 unit requirement of residential units. We have this requirement commercial. We want to do this amount of office. We think we have about this much square footage that we can devote to the hotel component. And based on my rough math, I think we can fit about 225 JW Marriott hotel units in the project. So I wish I could take credit for it was my idea to bring Ritz mm -hmm. to the market, but it really was Marriott's idea because uh, we approached them about the possibility of the JW Marriott because that's what we were talking to them about across the street very preliminarily. And the guy didn't say it in instantly. He said, I'll get back to you. And he came back and said, I have bad news, and but I have some good news. The bad news is we don't want to do a JW Marriott there. The square footage is too small. If we do a JW Marriott in downtown San Diego, we're probably going to want it to be more like the 400 to 500 rooms. And yeah, you're right. It's about 225 that would fit there. So that's not the, but we have been looking for the right place to put a Ritz. And since the average room sizes are significantly larger in a Ritz than a four star product, we think we can fit about 150 to 160 rooms in that. And that's a perfect size for us. And especially since you're saying the first room, the first rooms won't be until you get to the 20th or 21st floor for the hotel. So with that dynamic combined with, with the right room count and the location right there between the gas lamp and the ballpark district, this is the perfect opportunity to introduce the Ritz Carlton brand to downtown San Diego. So we, we jumped on it and, you know, and you guys have had some road bumps and a lot of people are wondering, you know, it's taken so many, so many years, right? You know, from the, this concept, the idea of the Ritz coming, you know, we've seen the articles in the newspaper and then you hear about the lawsuit, but you know, aside from the road bumps, we know that it's, it's a go, nothing has stopped. It's just, you know, delayed a little bit, but everything, it sounds like September, 2020, that we are going to see a Ritz in San Diego. In summer of 2024. No, I'm saying today's date is oh, right. September 2020. Right. 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 And so in within four years, I mean, so yes. it's just delayed, but it's happening. It's still happening. You know, you don't see, you know, I, I challenge anyone listening to come up with how many projects in one building you have six uses and including a five-star hotel, a high-end grocer, class A office, apartments, affordable apartments, affordable, um, uh, public parking, you know, there's a lot of challenges that comes with doing that. Not only the coordination of design and figuring out how the, the lobbies, as I talked a lot about earlier, but the financing, a lot of in the financing world, a lot of the people financing projects are either, you know, uh, apartment people, hotel people, office people, you know, there's some mixed use, but then even the mixed use people come to this and said, Oh, we said we like mixed use. We didn't mean six uses. Mm -hmm. No, that's you too know, many mixed yeah, uses. It's too much mixed use. So, um, but we seriously had meetings where where uh, me and Steve Black, who is the founder of of Sistera, we went to New York City and we you know, went from meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting, pitching the project. And one meeting, we'd have the people say, "We love this project. Looks great." The only issue is we don't have any allocation for a hotel right now. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, the, I'm going to pivot really but then, quick. But then the next meeting we'd go and we'd say, love the project, love the hotel. We don't have any allocation for condo. <laughs> and the next meeting, love the project, love everything. We don't have any allocation for office right, right. now. So, but we've, we've gotten through that. We have a great partner now, um, Chicago based partner mm -hmm. that is under construction right now, finishing up a, a hundred story building in downtown Chicago. So they're a very, very good partner with a lot of good relationships. And, and now we're feel more confident than ever that 
we're, we're going to be a go here. You know, and during this time, and I know you don't really deal with this, but you hear about it, you know, I'm sure distressed assets are a target. You know, what are you hearing that lenders are doing to help make it work for both sides, Jason? Uh, you know, lenders are in the business of lending. They're not in the business um, to take assets from you unless they're just really, really distressed. So most, most lenders are going to try to figure out a way to, to have you survive. Um, so I, that's what I've heard. I've heard that where there is some property distress, uh, or short term distress and, you know, with, with a property, when I say property distress, I, I met with that asset and, you know, the market is taking a hit overall, but most people feel that this is a, a blip and it's going to have a little bit of a hangover and the longer we're in shutdown or, or semi shutdown mode and not fully up um, and operating as normal, the longer the hangover will be. But most people feel like this is not going to put us into a deep recession like we were in, in, you know, late 08, 09, 10, and didn't start coming early out of until 11 or 12. You know, I think most people feel that, that this is a short-term blip. So the lenders in the market are, from what I've heard, are you know, being a little bit more conservative. But to those that they already have loans out on, they're trying to figure out ways to work things out so that, that people can survive. But yet they can get paid in the end. Mm -hmm. And we're hearing that more hotels are facing foreclosure and bankruptcy. How are you staying hopeful as we end the podcast? Let's leave on an optimistic, you know, note, you know, you're building this view, you know, helping uh, build, bring the Ritz Carlton to San Diego. How are you staying hopeful? You know, it's taken a while. There's been a lot of road bumps, but um, let's leave our listeners with something that, you know, can like glasses that always have full. Well, you know, by the time 2024 and we're delivering, it's going to be a different world than it is today. Um, you know, in 2001, in September of 2001, people were saying they weren't going to go and occupy office buildings again because of 9-11. And we got past that. And people started occupying office buildings again. Um, you know, we, we have a, a, a negative hit to our market right now, and we're going to get past it. And come 2024, we're going to be well past it. And you know, we're going to be there delivering the first five-star hotel, a Ritz-Carlton, and that's going to—that's a catalyst for a project that's going to be a one-of-a-kind project. And and you know, it's really—it's—it's—it's it's, it's a location that that needs that needs this type of project to really complete the puzzle for downtown. Because you look at downtown, you got Fifth and Market, the uh, main and main of the gas lamp, and you got the ballpark there and this is directly between the two and it's this large parking lot that it just has this gap between the two and now you're going to plop a Ritz Carlton and class A office and just a overall great project right in the middle it's going to be a, a nice a nice addition to downtown and it's really going to make that neighborhood you know connect that neighborhood from the East Village ballpark district to Gaslamp Definitely going to keep that energy going that we love so much in downtown. Jason Wood from Sistera, thank you so much for your time and your dedication to helping make our city what it is, which is America's finest city. I'd also like to thank my sponsor, Oscar Gastelum from Mortgage Hub. Remember, if you need help buying or selling your piece of paradise, give us a call, 858-244-3298. Again, that number is 858-244-3298. Have a blessed day.